quickly. My name is Marla. Um, I'm a book lady, par certified paralegal, certified mediator. I'm also a, a homeschool educator. And uh, I want to touch on uh, this one more topic for the principle of subsidiarity and the Catholic family. Uh, so by virtue of their, this ministry of educating, uh, parents become the fully parents in that they are begetted, begetters not only of the bodily life, but also of the life that through the spirit renewal flows from the cross and resurrection of Christ. In a very real sense, the quote from the Gospel of Matthew that opened the first chapter of this book reflects Jesus' application of the above principle, the principle of subsidiarity. Uh, he did not teach, though Christ blessed the children and prayed over them, he did not teach them. And this is the reason why. The very fact that man and woman are biological parents creates in them the duty to become spiritual parents. That is to say, to teach their children about God, who is the Father. As we say, saw, the agrarian system that was created by our founding fathers of apprenticeship, which we lost because of compulsory education, allowed young people to become what they are already are. Similarly, in order for parents to become what they already are, they must realize an act of the divine duty to become spiritual parents. God knows, it, knows this. So even though he is God, Jesus leaves to the parents the task that he established for them. He allows them to instruct their own children in the truth about himself. He teaches the parents, the parents teach their own children. In this way, the parents gain the tools necessary to live out the divine task they are called to perform. They become parents. Pope John Paul II summarizes and describes the source and nature of parental authority very clearly. For Christian parents, the mission to educate has a new specific source in the sacramental the sacrament of marriage, which consecrates them for the strictly Christian education of their children. The sacrament of marriage gives to the educational role the dignity and vocation of being really and truly a ministry of the church. St. Thomas has no hesitation in comparing it to the ministry of priests when you get married you have your ordained in the sacramental marriage of the church you are a ministry like priests and your ordination is to educate your children it is your inalienable right to educate your children under god and make him known the church has long considered the family, the domestic church that is within the family structure. The parents can be considered the priests and the children, the congregation. As the above quote shows, the teaching authority a parent has towards his own children is not given by the priests the bishop or the pope rather this authority is authority is invested in the parents directly by god himself though through the sacrament of marriage but if this is true what is the relationship between the family and the state or the family and the church Here's another quote that I want you to ponder. It also belongs to the state to protect the rights of children itself 
when the parents are found wanting their physically wanting either physically or morally in this respect whether by default incapacity or misconduct since as has been shown their right to educate is not an absolute and despotic one but dependent on the natural and divine law and therefore subject alike to the authority and jurisdiction of the church and to the vig vigilance and administrative care of the state in view of the common good. Besides, the family is not a perfect society. That is, it has not in itself all the means necessary for its full development. In such cases, exceptional, no doubt, the state does not put itself in the place of the family, but merely supplies deficiencies and provides subtle means always in conformity with the natural rights of the child and the supernatural rights of the church. So when parents cannot fulfill their physical or spiritual duties towards their children, others may step in to redress the problem. After all, this kind of par parental failure is precisely the difficulty we saw lived out in the relationship between Adam, mankind, and Christ. Adam, as the first parent, had divinely ordained duties to pass on the inheritance of grace to his children, an inheritance he had firmly rejected. But though he had rejected the means by which his duty could be fulfilled, he could not reject the duty itself. That is, even though he had fallen from grace, he was still responsible for handing on grace, something he no longer possessed, something he could therefore no longer hand on. Though he had squandered his inheritance, the bill was still due. Thus he found himself incapacitated, unable to carry out that which he was made to accomplish. God made man, entered into a situation to assist. However, he did so by actually becoming part of the family of man, so that the authority of man was not broken. He actually assumed full responsibility for every consequence of man, Adam's original failure. So the responsibility of man was not broken. This is how subsidiarity is maintained. If you would act in loco parentis, which is a, a term in education law, in the place of a parent, you must take on every aspect of the parent's failed task. Pope Pius IX understood all of this, but it was a lesson the American bishops would not fully grasp until 1930. Until next time, I will upload the other videos that pertain to this section so that you can get a full understanding of what it means in the Bible, in Scripture, by the principle of subsidiarity. But it is our duty as parents to educate our children. And when we fail in our duty, then the state and the church, but the state is not the highest authority. The church is, God is, okay? And together they put right what is wrong. Until next time, comment and like below. And let me know what you think. And shop for kids' books at k4699.myubam.com.